Welcome to another episode of Gator Rituals, uh, one of uh, Running Out the Clock's new and exciting uh, individual slash solo podcast in which uh, all your favorite SEC hating friends uh, talk about their favorite SEC hating teams. Um, myself, Keith Harkins, uh, being a fan of the uh, Florida Gators, um, we'll talk uh, almost exclusively about the Florida Gators, um, what they're doing, how things are going, uh, give you my my opinion about uh, what's happening, um, and just kind of generally talk Gator football. Um, man, last week was a fun week for Gator fans. Uh, big win over uh, top 10, top 5 school, LSU, ranked number 5 in the nation coming into Saturday's game. Um, huge game, uh, amazing atmosphere, absolutely electric. So uh, Florida um, was honoring Tim Tebow uh, officially, uh, uh, inducting him into Florida's ring of honor. Uh, and even being a fan of the school and of the program, the football team, I find the term ring of honor to be uh, weird slash hilarious. It reminds me a lot of uh, the circle of trust joke from from uh, Meet the Fockers or Meet the Parents or whatever it was. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, huge game, electric atmosphere. Uh, Florida certainly delivered on a uh, good performance. I say good, um, overall not great. Um, Florida's offense still left a little bit to be desired, but that's, I think, uh, I think that's just what we're going to get with Florida um, this year is uh, spurts of brilliance, um, good play calling, um, good play calling that, that meets what the players can give. Um, but, but, but a lot of inconsistency, uh, across the board on offense. Um, but that has been, uh, largely counterbalanced by, uh, the brilliance that has been the Florida Gator defense, uh, the last, uh, three or so weeks, um, four weeks now coming off of that, uh, horrific, uh, Kentucky loss in which Florida's defense looked completely lost, undisciplined, um, whatever other uh, adjective uh, that you want to use, um, that was them. So uh, big win over LSU. Um, what does this mean for Florida? Uh, well, um, I don't know if it really means a whole lot for Florida going forward uh, other than maybe they're a little bit closer to uh, being being a good SEC team again um, than maybe Florida fans originally thought. Um, of course it's a, it's a big win. Um, LSU is always a really tough opponent. They are, they are Florida's, uh, they're Florida's biggest SEC West rival and certainly one of their biggest rivals, uh, playing them every year. Um, I think the stat that popped up on Saturday was that the last, f like four out of the last five games, not including Saturday, uh, have been decided by, um, a touchdown or less, many of them being decided by uh, a field goal or less over the last decade. Um, Florida fans certainly remember some of those um, last-second field goals or those weird fake field goals uh, that Les Miles loved to run to break Florida Gator fans' hearts. Um, and so it was it was nice to, in a quote-unquote down year, uh, quote-unquote, rebuilding year to have uh, LSU feeling good about themselves coming in uh, ranked number five and uh, really giving sh uh, Florida their best shot and Florida shutting them down um, in the swamp. It was a very interesting game. Uh, one of the one of the maybe the more interesting bits is that uh, Florida held LSU's run game to only 180 yards. Um, I think only 180 yards. Uh, they sound like a lot, but on LSU's, I think, third to last drive or second to last drive, uh, the one where they took the lead temporarily, uh, going up 19 to 14 against Florida, um, Florida's defense gave up two huge runs to uh, Nick Brissett, one of 47 yards, the other one of uh, 31 yards. So of the 180 total yards and of the 95 rushing yards for Nick Brissett, 
uh, 78 of them came on one drive. Um, so it, it may be weird to say, well, if you, if you take this out of the game, then these numbers are what's true. And you have to look at, at the entirety of the game with the context of this actually happened. But, um, you know, if, if Florida's defense doesn't forget how to, how to, how to play the run game, then, uh, you know, Florida holds them outside of that drive to only, uh, a little over a hundred yards. Um, and that's, that's, that's really good for, uh, for a game against an LSU team that has always really prided itself on having a dominant run game with a dominant offensive line. Uh, Florida was uh, excellent in their front seven. Um, they were a little bit lax in their in their secondary coverage, but uh, that's to be a little bit expected um, as they deal with injuries and and um, uh, a lot of young players playing back there. Um, this this game stands out in particular for uh, Florida linebacker uh, uh, Vosian Joseph, um, who had an incredible week, um, an incredible game. Uh, he, uh, I believe, he got um, uh, all SC, all SEC uh, uh, defensive player of the week. Um, he had, he had, he had fourteen tackles, uh, or, or at least parts of fourteen tackles. He had four solo tackles, uh, good for second on the team behind uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, who was also a monster, um, and he had two sacks. Um, uh, it just just absolutely incredible game for him on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, not even uh, to mention the games by defensive ends, uh, C.C. Jefferson, um, and then you had uh, Jabari Zuniga, and of course uh, Ja'Kai Polite, who who uh, he himself had two sacks as well. Um, lots of quarterback hurries. Uh, uh, those three were just dominant on the defensive side of the ball. Um, uh, really not letting Joe Burrow have enough time to kind of set up and uh, get into a rhythm. Uh, and, and of course, uh, more notably making uh, or uh, forcing uh, Joe Burrow into two interceptions, his first two interceptions all year. Um, and that's what really sealed the deal for Florida. Uh, Dan Mullen had a really good game uh, play calling, I think, um, even if he did come out and publicly say that he got a little too conservative uh, after the first drive because, um, you know, Franks took that pick in the end zone. Um, but, you know, Franks again uh, showed that uh, he has a good control of the offense and he continually uh, progresses um, every week. Uh, so big win for Florida. Um <clears throat> Just, just absolutely huge win for them. Um, so now they've won four games after uh, that Kentucky game, and I mentioned it in the uh, regular podcast that we do on Sunday evenings that comes out on Monday mornings. Um, it, you look at this Florida team now versus where they were uh, at the end of that Kentucky game, and it is, it is, it is, it is a literal night and day difference for them. Um, <clears throat> their run game has progressed every week. Uh, their offensive line has gotten better in their pass protection. They've gotten better in their in their run blocks. Um, uh, uh, Franks continues to develop. The running backs are finally kind of getting into a groove. And, of course, um, uh, LaMichael Piron had a heck of a game this weekend, 17 carries, uh, 85 yards, two touchdowns uh, for an average of five yards a carry. So anytime that you're running back uh, – is running enough to basically guarantee a first down every every two runs. Um, <clears throat> that's going to be hugely important. And of course, uh, Frank's also had a, a a pretty big day on the ground running those uh, those uh, read options. He had six carries for for uh, forty two yards. Um, so solid day by him. Uh, but 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 Florida continues to progress as a team. Um, of course, noting that their uh, defense has just been. Uh, absolutely stellar. Um, it'll be fun to watch them uh, compete against uh, Georgia uh, towards the end of the year. Um, uh, maybe the most offensively competent team that they'll face the rest of the year out, outside of maybe Missouri and uh, Drew Locks. 
passing attack. So <clears throat> one of the things that is uh, a little bit weird that is popping up all over the place is uh, people asking, um, <clears throat> are the Gators back? Um, odd uh, as a question coming off of a 4-8 and eight season and, uh, you know, still kind of having struggles on offense. Um, I would say that the answer to that question is decidedly no. Um, that might be the uh, skeptic in me coming out, but um, I, I would also want to be really careful about about you know crowning them as as the champs are back or whatever it is um, <clears throat> going forward because Dan Mullins has a lot of work to do. He doesn't have his players. The type of players are going to fluctuate a lot over the next three years um, as he gets uh, you know his guys in there. Um, I would say that definitely Florida is 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 miles up the road uh, from where they were at the start of the year, and they're certainly miles up the road from where uh, Florida fans and really fans fans everywhere in college football thought that they might be uh, six games into this into the season. Um, <clears throat> so uh, they've got they've got a long ways to go. Um, they are looking good and that's promising. Dan Mullen is excited uh, about where they are. He's excited about the progress that the team has shown. He's excited about <clears throat> them buying in, um, especially after that Kentucky game. You know, he had he had a really good opportunity early to say, you know, you can play selfish football. You can try to make all the tackles yourself. You can try to do whatever the heck you want to on offense. But, but unless you buy into what I'm selling you, and unless you buy into what I'm trying to install here and really believe in what I'm doing for you, it's not going to go well. Um, clearly, that was the case against Kentucky. Um, <clears throat> so, so you know, the players have really bought in uh, to what Dan Mullen's selling, <clears throat> which, of course, helps recruiting. Uh, it just helps the program um, in full going forward. So... Uh, going forward, um, their next game up is against uh, Vanderbilt at Vanderbilt um, <clears throat> in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, a game that is always weird, uh, mostly because when it's in Nashville, uh, the stadium there is super odd. It's like right in the middle of Nashville, um, <clears throat> and it's always super quiet, like basically a scrimmage. Uh, and um, Florida has had a tendency of kind of falling asleep playing there, and 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 this game's going to be an eleven o'clock a.m. game, I think. It's 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 the first game of the day, so uh, Florida's got to watch out here for for a for a classic trap game coming off of a of of two really emotional wins uh, in Mississippi State and uh, LSU, of course. Um, uh, and it's not going to be a cakewalk. Uh, Kyle Shermer is a good quarterback, uh, uh, thrown for 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns already. Um, Keyshawn Vaughn is a good running back, uh, 439 yards and five touchdowns. Um, maybe not the best stats, but but really solid stats. Um, <clears throat> Florida only really opens up as, as a seven-point favorite on the road, and I'm sure that that's um, – not not an indication of where uh, the confidence is in Florida as a team, but just where Florida is as an offense. They are never going to be able to score a bunch of points, um, and their defense is usually going to have to help them out with that. Uh, so um, it's 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 you know maybe you get a Tennessee situation uh, when they play Florida and um, Vandy turns the ball over a million times, and Florida capitalizes out off of that and blows them out of the stadium. Um, it certainly happened before, but, you know, people forget also that Florida had a very similar record against Vandy as they did against Kentucky, where, where up, up until I think maybe three years ago, um, <clears throat> four years ago, maybe, uh, Vandy beat Florida for the first time in 25 years, um, uh, or 21 years, maybe at, at that point, I'm not sure, but, <clears throat> you know, when you go winless against a team for the better part of two decades or uh, two decades plus, then it's always a big deal to to uh, finally get that. 
get that win. So, um, you know, Vandy's always kind of a weird game against Florida. And again, into Nashville. Um, so, so we'll kind of see uh, where, where they're at going forward past that. Uh, Florida's got a bye week before they go to Jacksonville uh, to take on uh, number two ranked at this time, uh, Georgia. And, of course, that is the the world's largest cocktail bowl wiener party, uh, as Rose so uh, lovingly calls it. Um, neutral site game, that game's always, always, always kind of wild. Uh, following that up, the next week they've got Missouri, um, at Missouri, they've got South Carolina at South Carolina. Um, or, oh, sorry, uh, Missouri and South Carolina are at home, and they play Idaho at home before going on the road to Florida State. Um, so a lot of winnable games there. I would say that the only one that, that they're going to be a clear underdog in is the neutral site game uh, against Georgia. Um, and even then, you, you know, with where Florida's at, that's shaping up to be – uh, maybe a little more interesting game than than people thought going forward. Um, uh, Florida just has to keep growing every week, keep working on the run game, um, keep working on Franks, making sure that he makes those reads quickly and gets the ball out quickly. Um, I was reading today that uh, last year uh, Florida allowed 31 sacks or 37 sacks in um, 11 games. And that's, I think that was basically like worst in the entire uh, NCAA or or somewhere down there for sure. Um, coming into uh, game six, uh, or I guess after game six, actually, they had only allowed uh, five or six sacks all year. So um, that's been a huge plus. That says a lot about, about the work that Mullen staff is doing with the offensive line's protection. But it also says a lot about how Felipe Franks is reading the defense and making sure that he gets the ball out quicker. Because uh, last year there was a huge issue with him um, hanging on to the ball for way too long and taking a lot of unnecessary sacks. So while Florida fans, I'm sure, are are tired of him overthrowing receivers and throwing it out of bounds um, and just looking like he's definitely just getting rid of the ball, uh, that's a lot more palatable than seeing him on the ground, uh, you know, three or four times a game. Um, so uh, props to him, props to Mullen, uh, props to the Florida staff there. Um, so, you know, we got Vanny this week. Um, it'll be a tougher game than I think a lot of people think. Uh, and then Mullen is certainly uh, preaching that to his team. Um, so we'll see where it goes. Um I'm sure that Dan Mullen's feeling good. He's already got more wins this year than Florida had all of last year. And he's got a lot more winnable games ahead of him. So um, we'll see how we do. And uh, that'll do it for this week's uh, Gator Rituals. Um, make sure to uh, watch all the games. If you've, got, if you've got any questions or comments about, about Florida or about just the SEC at large, make sure that you... Uh, tweet tweet at us um, on Twitter or uh, catch us on Facebook. Um, we are we are constantly sharing uh, new material, so lots lots of stuff to listen to. Um, and make sure that you uh, catch us back again on Monday. Um, and uh, you guys have a good weekend, and we'll uh, we'll see you later. Go Gators!